Many people pay no attention to seaweed at all, even though they're stumbling over it on the beach. But seaweed is the forest of the sea, forming communities in which other plants, other animals live and thrive. Seaweeds are providing our oxygen atmosphere along with the land plants. Without these photosynthesizers, we would be literally gasping for air. My name is Kathy Ann Miller. I work at the University of California at Berkeley in their herbarium, where I'm a curator or a person who takes care of seaweed specimens. An herbarium is really a plant museum, a treasure house of beautiful specimens that tell stories, tell the story of the past, tell the story of the present, tell the story of the future. I'd like to introduce you to some friends of mine. Here are the green seaweeds. The brown seaweeds. And then we move into the red seaweeds. The reds have a place in my heart, I have to say, but the California seaweeds, those are my favorites. There are many, many species of seaweed in the world. There might be 10,000 species, and our university herbarium represents more than half of those. Seaweeds are just a subset of a greater group of organisms on Earth called algae. Algae occupy the ocean, freshwater, and land. Seaweeds are specialized. They only occur in the ocean. We're at China Beach, part of the Golden Gate National Recreation Area. This is Postelsia, a seaweed native to California, a brown seaweed, in fact, a kelp. This is the holdfast of the seaweed, specialized branches that holds the seaweed in place so it doesn't get washed away. This is the stipe, flexible, perfectly good for being bashed by the waves and standing up again. And then at the top, we have a cluster of blades, and these blades bear the reproductive structures. You can see how brown this is. This pigment allows photosynthesis to happen. So unlike plants on land, this baby photosynthesizes all over its body. Very, very efficient. Here at China Beach, you can see the intertidal zone. Creatures here are half the time out of the water, half the time in the water. They have special adaptations for this. They have compounds in their cell walls that help them retain water when they're in the air. Also notice how they're aggregated in groups. This groups helps them retain water. So this is one of the ways they can live in an extreme environment and feel like they're in the water all the time. Seaweeds of California are threatened in a lot of different ways. Climate change, of course. There are more and more non-native species, many of them invasive. So without really knowing what we have in our holdings, how can we apply the lessons of the past to understanding what we have today and where we're going in the future? Here we go. Ready for the first one of the morning? We were funded by the National Science Foundation to inventory our West Coast seaweeds, Oregon, Washington, California. One year later, we have taken high resolution photos of 76,000 specimens. The next step is to database the collection information, including latitude and longitude of each collection site so that specimens can be mapped. With global climate change in the ocean, I think we're going to find that southern seaweeds will be moving further north as warming happens. Each species will take its own course. Some will be enhanced by warm water, others will be completely extinct. Once we get the records together, the maps created, we'll be able to make predictions of what might be happening in the future. The students are able to process, to digitize, 400 or more specimens a day. They're incredibly fragile, and the very fact of handling them so much was a huge concern to all of us, and I think we did a good job. Because I'm an expert on the native species of California, I've been called to help 
understand the non-native species, the invasive species that have come from other parts of the world, mostly through human transportation. Most of them are from Asia and may in fact be out competing some natives. It's very hard to tell them from the native species, even with 30 years of experience. DNA sequencing, genetic techniques, allow us to identify and clearly distinguish them from our native flora. So we've been developing a mystery here. A seaweed was collected in California that appears not to be a native. After the DNA extraction of our two samples, the native and the non-native, we come up with the sequence here. This sequence matches exactly the sequence of Daisia sessilis from Japan. The second line is our native Californian Daisia sinicola. Notice that it's related, but as you go along this way, they do not match. And that is the smoking gun that tells me our non-native seaweed is different from our native seaweed. So there's the puzzle and the mystery of it all. Trying to understand, is this new? Is it non-native? But in addition to that, it's just the sheer glorious beauty. Their colors, their textures, their smells. It's just a fantastic assemblage of time and place. And maybe our future depends on creatures such as these.